It's like the wind. You can't see it, but under the right circumstances, you know it's there. Welcome to What is Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi allows devices to exchange messages without a cable in between, and works by using part of the electromagnetic spectrum called radio waves. Your typical home router will have a Wi-Fi antenna on the top, and is what allows your Wi-Fi-enabled devices to communicate with the router. It's important to note that Wi-Fi itself won't get you connected to the internet. That's the job of your internet service provider, a company which provides an interface to the internet through your phone line or cable connection. The original name for Wi-Fi was complicated, so a company called Interbrand was hired to come up with a better name. After some back and forth, they came up with the name Wi-Fi and thus the trademark was born. The advertising slogan, the standard for wireless fidelity, brought about the common misconception that Wi-Fi is an abbreviation of this wireless fidelity bit, when in fact it was intended as a play on words from Hi-Fi. You may have noticed that using Wi-Fi can sometimes be frustratingly slow, especially by comparison to plugging in an Ethernet cable when in a busy office building. But to understand why it can be slower, we need to talk about how we measure network speed. Sending information across a network will eventually lead to ones and zeros being sent in the form of electrical signals. A stronger electrical signal represents a one, and a weaker signal represents a zero. These ones and zeros are called bits, and are the building blocks of all of computer science. Network speed is measured in the number of bits which flow across a point in space every second. The unit for this is bits per second, but since you'll normally get millions or even billions of bits passing by in a second, we use kilo, mega, or gigabits per second as the unit. So, back to slow Wi-Fi. Besides things coming from space, things coming from the ground, and things generally in the way, there is a cause of slow Wi-Fi that you might not know about. Now that is because of this. Yuck, right? The important bit to take away is the collision part. Wi-Fi devices can only process one request at a time, so if you're sitting in Starbucks at peak time where there are hundreds of devices connected at once, all exchanging thousands of messages every minute, it's not surprising that you might get a few requests which happen at the same time. CSMACA gets around this by checking to see if the Wi-Fi channel is busy when sending a message. If it is, the sending device will wait for a random amount of time before attempting to retransmit the message. This adds time to requests and hence slows down the speed of the connection. If you plug your device into an Ethernet cable connected to your home router, you can't get collisions so the connection is faster. With Wi-Fi becoming more and more prevalent, people are more often wondering whether or not it's harmful. Where does this whole thing come from? The idea is that EM waves transfer energy in transmission. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy. The question is whether the energy transferred from Wi-Fi signals is high enough to cause damage to humans or animals. Though some people say yes, and most studies say no, if there is a risk of using Wi-Fi, then there's also a risk of using Bluetooth headsets and some baby monitors, both of which use similar frequencies in transmission. But at the end of the day, Wi-Fi is what gets your phone, your tablet, and likely your laptop and tower connected to the internet. Where would we be without it? Probably tangled. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos explaining the tech we use every day but don't know much about. Thank you to the guys at The Noun Project for all the graphics that went into this video, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed making it.